Hello, let's now talk about logical protection measures and go through a few of our big ones. So a logical protection measure is different to a physical protection measure because logical measures protect computer systems while they are running. Whereas a physical measure protects the system from access. So really physical is real life, logical is on the computer itself. So if an attacker has somehow managed to get access to the computer, either physically or virtually, the logical measures will try and stop them. So a main example would be anti-malware applications, anti-malware software, which are there to scan the computer for known malware. And as a reminder, malware is malicious software, things like viruses, ransomware, trojans, etc. So the way this works generally is if malware is found on the computer while it is scanning, the application will send an alert to you so you can see that it's found some malware and it might just do this automatically or it might give you a choice to then quarantine it and then possibly, well I say possibly, then hopefully remove it from the computer. So quarantine is where it, it moves it to an area where it can't cause any more damage, it can't spread further if it's trying to spread and then removal is trying to delete it, which with some types of malware is quite difficult for you to do and so the anti-malware software is trying to do this for you. Now, if you wrote antivirus software in the exam, this might be okay, but despite us calling it, like in this picture, it's often called antivirus software, really it will protect against any malware, and so the proper term should be anti-malware. Anyway, one really important point you can maybe try and fit into answers is, anti-malware software must be regularly updated so its database is up to date. The way it works is by having a database of known malware, and every single day, New types of malware get released, unfortunately, as attackers find new ways to exploit computers. The anti-malware company, if they're good, should be regularly updating their database with the latest malware and sending updates to your computer. But if you don't actually install these updates, then potentially your anti-malware software doesn't know about the latest malware and so it might miss them when it is doing the scanning. So really this protection measure has two aspects to it. The first aspect is actually having anti-malware software and the second aspect is actually updating it when you do have it. A second logical measure which often gets mixed up with anti-malware and so I really want to try and separate them is a firewall. So a firewall is much more about the network. Okay, It's monitoring networks and it will filter messages based on rules. It won't necessarily detect malware coming into your computer and anti-malware itself is on the computer, whereas a firewall is the network between your computer and somebody else's computer. So if you are doing different jobs, you might use a firewall to let's, for an example, say block messages coming from certain websites or areas in the world. This is called a blacklist, where you put down a list of maybe IP addresses you want to ban from accessing your network. So it's not necessarily, like I say, blocking things like malware, unless it's a very, very advanced firewall, it's just a set of rules and it will block messages based on these. So you can have software based firewalls and you can have hardware based firewalls, the software one being on a computer, hardware being its own distinct box usually. And firewalls can be free and they can be very, very expensive. Um, but the point is they're blocking traffic based on these rules, whether it's a real device, whether it's software. So let's look at an example. Let's say you've got a laptop which is connected to a router, a wireless router here. And let's say this time you've got a actual physical hardware firewall, which like I say, can be quite expensive. Well, if you are say on YouTube, YouTube is perfectly valid. And so that traffic will be allowed through your router and will be allowed through the firewall too. The firewall will check the messages, make sure they're all okay and let it through. Whereas if a firewall is good, if you had an attacker trying to contact your computer, it should block that message. You can't fully stop the attacker contacting you, but you can stop access to your actual device. Whereas if you have a software firewall, it's a little bit different. So let's take away that hardware one. I've put a firewall just because I don't know how else you'd represent a firewall on a computer, just as some software. Well, in this scenario again, YouTube would be allowed through and that's fine. But the slight problem is the attacker, <clears throat> their kind of messages reach your computer. Now the firewall should block these messages and prevent you doing anything with them. But unlike before, where you kind of had that barrier of a physical firewall, this time, if it's software, it's potentially not quite as good 
because the attacker can still reach your computer, so to speak. Although the firewall should still block it. So this is why hardware ones are often a bit more effective and a bit more expensive, usually. But they block packets based on a set of rules.